Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at dealing with unforeseen news as a scalper. How do we do it? Stay tuned. Hey guys, so following on from a scalping little mini course that we've got on the channel for you guys, had a raft of questions coming in, keep them coming because I like to see how you guys have interpreted some of the things kind of make me think a little bit more. I put more content out there for you and it's what it's all about guys. We're all trying to improve together as traders. If you can learn from me and I learn from you guys as well. That's the beauty of this channel. Okay, so a question came in from Andy Olson Moyano. Andy, cheers for your question, appreciate it. And he said, unforeseen news risk. Best ways to handle as a scalper. Hedging doesn't seem to be an option. See historic adverse moves. Quantify them and divide the risk into your total number of trades. So Andy is asking, all right, so do you go back, well, I assume he's asking this, do you go back and look at all the times when you have kind of extreme moves, work out how much they are, how many pips they are, how much percent they are, and then divide those into your total number of trades to work out the actual risk you've got to you, and then I guess adjust your position size or try to do something to combat that. Um, and thanks, Andy, for that question. That's a kind of interesting take on it. So Really, if we look at it broadly and we go, right, how do we deal with that? So do we go back and we say, well, we expect to have it. Now, what, one thing that a great kind of point that Andy has made is he's not saying ignore it. He's accepting it and he wants to say, OK, well, this is my idea on it. Is there any other ways of doing it? That's a, that's a great start because many scalpers, I feel, ignore it. They go, oh, well, you know, there's no there's no kind of it's not going to happen to me. And that's OK to a certain extent, because. I've heard this argument before. Let me talk about the argument. The argument is I've got a 50% chance of it being for me or against me. And if you think about it as a scalper, let's say you're long, right? You're going along, you're chugging along. The chances of some hidden news coming out that goes up or down should be around 50%. And one thing that these scalpers will say as well is, well, I'm also gonna align myself a little bit more with news that's uh, in my favor. So I'll, I'll only be trading long on something where we've had a lot of recent up spikes or I'll be trading short on something down spikes. And that makes a bit more sense to me because let's say you're trading in a downtrend environment. And let's say and you look at the historical news the history, let's say four out of five of the bigger spikes have been to the downside because there's a lot of negative sentiment, a lot of negative news around whatever you're scalping, then to align yourself on the short side makes better sense because you're aligning yourself with the likelihood of being of adverse news being negative and dragging the price low, which is going to help your position rather than hinder it, which is fine. But it still leaves the question, how do you stomach those potential adverse moves against you? Do you kind of look back on the history and go, right, well, there's been 10 of those, uh, I've been quantifying them, there's been 100 pips each, how many trades have I been doing, etc. how much size I want to do, what sort of stop loss can I put in? Or do you go, right, well, it will work out in the wash. If I do enough of them, then it'll be okay. Now, that might sound seem a little bit blasé, but there's something to that, right? If you can stomach, so to speak, a big loss from time to time, but you know that the likelihood is you're gonna get a few big wins to overcome that, then as long as you've baked that into the strategy and you know that's gonna happen, it shouldn't be a bigger deal. It shouldn't be that much of a problem. You should say, well, okay, all I need is really, you know, for it to continue in the way it is and I'll be fine. now. Of course, sentiment changes. When we have downdrafts in markets, often we'll kind of get news catalysts that might be short covering, it might be you know, bullish news that everyone's piling in, so it might change and you might be on the wrong side of it. So it doesn't really give, take the risk off completely. Now, we can't take the risk off completely anyway, but another thing you can do is you can have an emergency stop loss in whatever you're doing. Now, this isn't always gonna save you because if you've got uh, something that's gapping, it's not going to save you because it's going to gap through. But generally speaking, news, generally speaking, this is what happens, guys. If you're scalping or day trading, news comes through slowly. I say slowly, I mean like over a period of maybe 30 seconds. So it doesn't just go no news, good news. It goes no news, something's going on, something's going on, 
Bam, 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 it might do an initial spike up, then it'll go another leg, then it'll pause a little bit, then it'll do another leg, maybe it'll come down. So it, will, it won't just go from one point to the other. Yes, there will be a, a, a kind of portion of that, but it won't just go to the stratosphere. So if you have something that can get you out on that first impulse, that's not gonna be so damaging. From time to time, it's gonna get you out when you didn't wanna get out, but scalping is all about just being brutally brutal with that stop loss, kind of cutting the loss, cutting the losers quickly. Otherwise you end up, if you give anything flexibility in scalping, it's got a ne negative expectancy in my opinion. So having something that either puts a stop loss in automatically, or you know, you've got a stop that goes in, or even having a stop loss in there and then scalping around your position and it's cancelling that later so that you've got some safety net. Yes, it's still going to hurt if, you, if it kind of rips up 30 ticks and you're looking for six uh, to the downside. It's going to sting, but it's not going to be like a 100-point face ripper. It's not going to be a 200-point face ripper. Uh, and the chances of it doing that immediately are pretty slim. Can it do it? Yes, it can. But we're just kind of reducing that time. And if you look back and you see the, the kind of immediate moves, if you like, or the surprise moves, generally, like I say, they are. Uh, you know, like a spike, a pause, another spike, maybe a pull back. And so even if you get slippage, the worst case scenario is you're going to be out on the first leg of that spike, which isn't going to be as bad as kind of just freezing and seeing it going up and up and up and up and just being caught in a runaway train with size on the short side. Eek, big face ripper. So there's a couple of things to do there. Accept it, align yourself with where the kind of tail risk, if you like, is or the event risk is coming from and make sure you're on the side that you expect that to come from, which can work in your favor and just expect every now and then you're going to get hit by one. The other one is to maybe reduce the impact of the hit by having a stop loss in at some point that's an emergency stop loss you don't rely on it but it might get you out a little bit sooner than if you were kind of stuck in it deer in headlights saw it saw it pause go again because it might just pause for a couple of seconds that's more than enough time to get your stop filled even if you have got slippage let's say your stop was here let's say that was a slippage that's still okay um but maybe if you're there watching it you might pause too long and it goes again another leg another leg so that's something to consider or a bit of a hybrid of the two uh or as andy says going back and kind of looking at history and working out well these are the x amount of moves i've had this is the kind of move magnitude of the move i'm expecting uh, and working out from that and wrapping it and baking it into your trading strategy anyway guys dealing with unforeseen news as a scalper appreciate the question take care bye bye